all right you guys so now we are here with part three of the contract now y'all it's been several weeks since i gave y'all part one and two so i've had time to think about how this is going to end but as um much like my other story times excuse me i am basically coming up with the stories off the top of my head so here we go with part three this will more than likely be a four part series by the way so Tierra is upset. She's visibly shaken and upset because Paul has asked her during his um his house party, he had asked her to reenact several uh scenarios or whatever, you know, uh, something part of acting school that they typically do. So he gives her a scenario and she acted out. One of them happens to hit too close to home and she believes that he purposely must have stated this uh scenario where she's to she's to pretend like she's a young child trapped in a closet and she's asking her captors for for water brianne ends up taking her roommate brianne excuse me ends up taking her home and so she goes to bed crying and still upset about the night so a couple of weeks go by so she feels like she's slowly getting back to normal um because that that incident y'all really affected her family um she was young at the time when it happened she understood how it affected her family and how even to today it had a, a horrible effect on her parents and her other siblings her other two siblings so um like i said there were originally four girls with the baby being abducted so all right you guys so she goes on to work this is like like i said in a couple of weeks have gone by she's gone goes on to work and again she's a bartender at this club honey i already forgot about the club name i think it's called ozone club ozone so it's a busy night and tiara's feeling really good she's making tips she has decided not to move out you know it's been too much going on and she feels like you know brian may need her at this time so that you know um that's off the table basically so anyway as she's you know busy making her rounds um one of the other waitresses male comes up to her and said hey um tiara you won't believe who just asked for you up in the vip section so tiara whipped around and she's like who i haven't been um monitoring the vip section since and as soon as she thought about it mel said it's that movie director paul and so Tierra looked up and there he was standing up on the, he was looking over the bar or the railing, looking down directly at Tierra and Tierra heart started racing. And she looks at Mel and she's like, he asked for me personally. And Mel said, yeah, is there a problem? I mean, he always tips really good. If you don't want to do it, I'll take it. So Tierra looks up and now she sees that Paul has went ahead and sat down on the couch. She can't really see him, but he's not there looking over the balcony anymore. So she's like, no. She look, turns over look at Mel. She's like, no, I got it. It's fine. So now Tierra's fear has turned into anger so she looks up the slip of drink she gives it to Brienne and Brienne looks at her. she's like are you sure you want to do this she's like yeah I'm I'm sure so she takes the, the drinks and she goes up to the VIP section again it's upstairs and so she looks at him and he she you know as she goes up she sees him and she's like he's still fine as ever she <laughs> Now she mad, but she she still can appreciate a good looking man. She's like, well, he's still good looking. He's still she ain't gonna deny that. So she puts the drinks down, and he looks up her, looks up at her and says, well, hey Tierra, um, it's been a while. You're looking great. And so Tierra looks at him and she's like, hi, how are you? She's keeping it nice, you know, keeping him a professional because she's at work. She needs his job, okay? So he's like, I've been doing well, you know. Thanks for asking, you know. I wanted to come up here and personally apologize for how things ended um, and I want to explain um, you know why I mentioned your sister and he said that without blinking and Tierra was looking at him and she's like thinking to herself then he did know he already knew about this beforehand and so she looks at him she's like I'm I'm listening he's like well you were at work I don't want to hold you but what i will ask if you will have dinner for me with me on saturday night so tiara kind of looks at him 
she in a couple of seconds go by he's kind of surprised because paul is not he's a powerful wealthy man he is not used to women turning him down right so she's like okay that's fine he's like well then i'll i'll come pick you up i'll have my driver to come pick you up and she's like okay that's fine so she continues to you know wait on him and he you know is really nice eventually he had some other people up there and she thinking you know he's forgot about her and so brianne was like so what did he want she, and so tia was like girl he gonna sit up here and say that he apologized for bringing up my sister's death right and that he wants to have dinner on saturday and so brianne started smiling she's like i knew it and Sierra was like, what do you mean? She's like, I, she's like, girl, he has a thing for you. Look how he was looking at you up there. I saw him looking at you up there on that balcony. And Tierra rolled her, her eyes and she's like, you know what? Anyone who would bring up my sister like that, I'm not interested, but I am interested in the free meal. So Brian was like, I know that's right. And they high five, right? So y'all, the night winds down and Brianne is going through getting the tickets now she helps gather the tickets for the waitresses and she looks down at the um tip that Paul loved Tiara and you know Brianne is like Tiara did you see this and Tiara's like what do you mean she's like look what this guy left you she looks down he left her a $500 tip and so Tiara was looking at it she's like this can't be right She's like, I told you, T, he has a thing for you. And these five zero zeros just proves that. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, I cracked myself up. So Tierra was like shaking in disbelief. Now, if it was still on, you know, if she was still considering moving, this was just the right of money she needed to move out. But again, she decided not to. She's going to go ahead and, and, you know, keep a roommate and possibly look at moving out towards the end of the year, right? So Tierra goes home, she puts that money in her savings account, she'll just sit on it, right? So, you know, um, this was Thursday night, see that, right? Friday night rolls around and she gets a call and it's Paul. And he's like, hey Tierra, I just wanna make sure that we're on for tomorrow night. I, I really would like to see you. So Tierra still paused a little bit. And so he's like, hello? She's like, I'm here. She's like, yeah, yeah, of course, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're still on, so. He's like, okay, um, I decided not to have my driver to pick you up. Instead, I'll drive us to the restaurant. So Tierra was like, okay, that's cool. He's like, so does 7 o'clock sound fine? She's like, yep, that'll be fine. So now all of a sudden, she's feeling a little excited. And she's like, Psh, she's not going to give this guy any time of day. He set up here and, you know, was a little bit... Um, not necessarily malicious so you know now all of a sudden she's feeling something she's like no there's no way this guy came off as cocky yes he's good looking but he came off as cocky and the fact that he brought up her, again brought up her sister just shows a different side of her and she's not sure if she would want to you know even date someone like that so but she's you know she's still going to be nice to him for this date you know whatever she doesn't even want to call it a date so sure enough you know, Saturday night comes comes up and Tierra made sure that her fresh new bob was looking cute. She put on this um white tight mini dress. She has on these white hoop earrings and some clear heels that have a white or well, clear um, pumps that have a white heel, right? Looking fabulous, honey. And she looks at her watch and it's like seven o'clock and she's looking around. Around five minutes later, she sees a um black corvette pull up and it has pw in the license plate and she knows it must be paul and he steps out and he looks at her and he's like you look absolutely stunning and she's like thank you he opens up the door you know for her and they go in and he asks her he's like have you ever been to this french restaurant called um Le renee's she's like no i haven't but i've heard of it he's like okay i'll you know i'm pretty sure you'll like it so they're driving he's whipping in and out of traffic and you know tiara is a little um nervous but she's also it it makes her a little excited too okay mr winthrop is that his last name y'all Oh, so the maitre d', I think that's his last name, I'm sorry y'all, so the maitre d' is like, it's nice to see you again Mr. Winthrop, we have a um, table here at the back, and so um, another waitress leads them back to the back, and a very, very nice, Tierra has never been to a restaurant like this, so they sit down, you know, and she looks at him, and he's not saying anything, he's just looking at her, and that kind of makes Tierra a little uneasy. You know what? You amaze me. 
I've been with all types of women from all over the country, all ages, all socioeconomic statuses, background, um, women that were models, women that were heirs to, you know, thrones. And Tara was thinking to herself, why is he telling her this shit? You know what I mean? Like, who cares? You know, he's just pumping himself up. So, but anyway, he's like, but there's something about you that really infatuates me. And so Tiara looked at him, she's like, well, is that the reason why you decided to bring up my dead sister? And Paul looked at her, he's like, you know what? I wanna apologize for that. Um, I did not know that you would react like that. If I had known that you would, you know, react the way you did, there's no way it would bring that up. He's like, one of the things that I do, he, he begins to explain himself. And so Paul goes into this long explanation Child, what the hell is this? Who is this? My husband looks mad and angry at the same time. Child, he, you, you need a you need a blessing. Paul goes on to explain that with any of the actors or actresses that he considers for a movie role, he has a extensive background done on them. Um, he didn't think that bringing up a type of scenario similar to her sister's kidnapping would have that effect on her. Um, and so again, he went into apologizing about it. He goes on to explain how, you know, he come from a history of abandonment. Um, when he was younger, you know, he was raised by his mother who ended up, um, she had schizophrenia and she ended up, um, committing suicide and that left a, a huge impact on Paul because, um, he found her, he found her, she had overdosed on pills. And so Tierra was looking at him with, you know, tears in her eyes. And so, you know, he kind of clears his throat because his throat is, is croaking while he's talking about his mother. He's like, so I understand pain. And like I said, I'm sorry if bringing up this situation caused, you know, you to relive that pain. I never want to do that. And that's when he reach, reaches over across the table. He's like, I would never want to do that to you. He's like, actually, I really do like you. And so she looks down at his hand on top of her and she's like, she's like, thank you. I, I really do appreciate you apologizing. And so... The night goes on, they have a nice dinner, right? And so it's winding down. And so as he's getting back into the car, he said, you know what, I would like to show you something. Do you, do, would you mind? And she's like, sure. So they jump back into his car, y'all. They're driving up towards the hills. And she's like, where are we going? So going up towards the hills towards his, she wasn't that familiar with this area because she'd only been there one time and that was for his party. But she knew exactly where they were going. They were heading back towards his house. So she's getting a little nervous. She's like, I don't know about this. And he's like, are you okay? Cause he could see her getting uneasy. She's like, yeah, are we, where are we going? Are we going back to your house? He's like, yeah, I guess I should explain. I wanted to show you something um, back in my home. Are you okay with that? If, you're, if you feel uncomfortable, we can turn right around. Cause he, he started to slow down a little bit. She, and she thinks about it and she's like, no. I'm okay. So as they, you know, go back and, sorry, they're, they're going, up towards Paul's house y'all I do apologize I'm fumbling because I'm trying to think of what to say they're going back up towards Paul's house and he parks the car they get out go towards the um you know walk into the house and that's when Tiara saw from the side of her she saw a woman in um all black clothes like scrubs almost and she turns around and she's like Mira <laughs> yeah y'all know me and my my Latinos housekeepers she's like oh mija um chastity and so that's when paul turns around and in fluent spanish talks to this lady and she's kind of looking at tiara kind of kind of curious but she caught her chastity and so tiara was like hmm and so paul talks to her and the the housekeeper goes away and he comes back to her he's like i'm sorry um that's my housekeeper she's you know tiara's like okay so they start heading upstairs, right? And then they turn left and then that's when Paul is standing in front of the dub a double doors. And so he opens up the double doors and they're walking into what looks like a huge library. So as they're going in, um, Paul goes toward and he grabs a book and he, he begins to explain how this book 
um, he stole when he was in uh, undergrad working on his degree and how it really inspired him to basically work him work his way up from nothing y'all he grew up very poor as I stated his mother um, being a single mom tried to provide for him for him so he says and that now I want you to have it and so she looks at it and she sees it's like a leather bound book it doesn't look like anything and she's like okay thank you and so that's when um he's like would you like to have something to drink and so tiara looks at him and she's like god he really does look good she's like that's fine i'll 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 have something he's like great so he goes over and looks like there was already two glasses there he had some champagne then she looks at him she's like well shouldn't we toast or something he's like he looks at her and he smiles she's like again she's like he is so fine why lord what I'm sorry, y'all. So she, he's like, you're right. We should toast to something. And he looks at her. He said, to new beginnings. So she says, to new beginnings. And so they toast and take, you know, a drink. And that's when Paul, he puts his glass down. He looks at her and he starts walking slowly towards her. And that's when, you know, Tierra's like, oh, no. And so he gets closer and he gets real close to her. And that's when he moves her hair. He gets something out of her hair y'all cr crazy old man move and it's like i'm sorry you had something in your hair and it was like a piece of leaf or something and she's she's you know her heart is right she's just like oh okay thank you so he's like well this is what i wanted to do is you know to come up here and just bring you the book he's like so you ready to go home she's like yeah and so she's a little confused but she thought he was gonna kiss her you know going in for the kiss and he didn't so they go back downstairs, go back downstairs, get into the car, and he drives her home, right? So as he's sitting there, he parks there, he gets out, opens up the door, and, you know, grab, helps her out the car, basically. Sorry, y'all, I was coughing. <clears throat> helps her out the car. He's like, you know, Tiara, I had a great time tonight. I appreciate you um, allowing me to take you out to dinner, and I would love to do this again. So, she, you know, Tiara looks at him, and so she thought, you know, why not? She's like, you know what? I enjoyed myself too. And I wouldn't mind going out again. So he was like, okay. He jumps into his beautiful black Corvette and goes off. So y'all, so y'all, two or three more weeks go by and she hears nothing from him. From him. And so she's kind of moping around and Brienne is sitting at the table eating her cereal like, mm. She said, look, T, he's a busy man. I promise you, he will call you. He will. He'll call. Just give us some time, you know. These type of men, they ain't your typical men. So just wait and see. She, so Tiara goes downstairs. She's getting ready to go, you know, run her weekly grocery store run. So as she goes down, she gets down to the, like, bottom level of the garage. So look who is down there waiting, holding um, some white roses. It's Paul. And so Tierra was a little, she's like, how did you get in here? Because you have to have a security code. He's like, he looks at her, he's like, I have my ways. He's like, you know what? I know it's been a couple of weeks, so I want to just stop by and I got these for you. So he hands her the white roses and she looks down. She's like, these are beautiful. Thank you. So he's like, so were you off to go somewhere? And she's like, well, yeah, I was going to go do my weekly grocery store run. Why? What is it? He's like, well, I was wanting to know if you want to go um to this museum with me and she's like a museum right now and she looks at her watch and it's like nine o'clock in the morning she's like doesn't the museum open up at noon and he's like well for me they'll open up anytime and so Tierra's like hmm and she's thinking about it. she's like okay we can go so they hop into his little corvette and they go on and go off to the museum <clears throat> and the museum has apparently open up for, to, for Paul privately because he's one of their largest donors, okay? He donates money every every year, and so they basically make it available for him for whenever. So <clears throat> they're walking around looking at all these beautiful pieces of art, and Tiara is in awe. I mean, she's been to the museum before, but she's never seen this type of artwork before. So he's, Paul is talking about a lot of the pieces. He's been collecting art himself, so he's well-versed on this subject matter, okay? So that's when they walk on, and Tierra notices a table, 
and um with candles and there's someone there on the side looks like a private chef and so Tierra was like what is this he's like i thought we could have a bite to eat some breakfast and Tierra was impressed so she's like okay and so she's like yeah she starts smiling and he's like that's the smile i was looking for so she's thinking oh, okay so they sit down and sure enough he hired a private chef to fix them you know to make them breakfast and it's absolutely delicious so um you know she you know they, they start conversating and um that's when paul asked her he's like so tiara what are your dreams what do you want to do and so she looks at him She's like, you really want to know? He's like, yeah. And she's like, I want to become one of the biggest actresses in the world. I want to be a mother. I want to be a wife one day. And so he looks at her and he says, do you think you can have all of that? And she's like, I don't know why not. He's like, well, Tiara, you know, being an actress takes up a lot of time. So you may not be able to do all those things simultaneously. So if you could choose one, what would it be? So Tierra thought about it long and hard. And she's like, I would like to be a wife. A wife and then a mom. And so Paul looked at her and he's like, that was the answer I was hoping for. And so Tierra's like, mm, okay, this is a little too soon to be talking about being a wife and, you know, a future like that on a second quote unquote date. So she lets it go. And so they finished their dinner and just talking about, you know, their, their dreams and aspirations. And that's when Paul grabs her hand and he's like, you know what, I know that I really don't know you that well, but I want to know if you will be willing to come by my house later on tonight. And so he's like, Tierra's like, well, I have to work. And he's like, how much would you typically make a night there? And she looks at him and she looks at, she's like, you can't buy me. He's like, I'm not trying to buy you. What I'm trying to do is make sure that you still have the money you need and I spend time with you. So Tiara looks at him and she just gives some number, like basically blowing him up to see if he will. She's like, $2,000. He said, okay, without blinking an eye. And she's like, $2,000. This is what she says under her breath. Tiara probably brings in... Five hundred to a thousand dollars a night, so two thousand was way above what she normally brings in. He's like, okay. He opens up his um, what do you call it, y'all? His jacket takes out a checkbook and write money for two thousand dollars. Writes a check for two thousand dollars and hands it over to Tierra. He's like, I don't want to try to take any money out of your hand. So if it means me giving you two thousand dollars just to spend an evening with me, I'm willing to do that. He ends up drop, dropping her off at home. And so he leans over outside of the um, the window, y'all. And he's like, so tonight, my driver will come and get you around 9 o'clock. That's okay? She's like, yeah, that'll be fine. So she goes upstairs. And Brienne was like, so what are you doing back with no groceries? Where are my hot pockets? <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. So <laughs> Brienne don't chubby stuff. So Tierra's like, you won't believe this. So Tierra goes on to tell her about how Paul was downstairs waiting on her. They had a breakfast and you know, looking at this beautiful museum. And he basically wants to wants her to come over tonight. Brianna's like, T, you know what this means, right? She's like, mm, no. She's like, girl, he wants to hook up with you. He wants to sleep with you. And Tierra was like, no, like it's too soon. It's only the second. Well, at this point, if you want to consider it a third date. And no, he knows I'm a virgin and then I'm basically waiting until I'm married. He really doesn't know that part, but that's what she's going to explain. And she's like, well, whatever. Just I'm just calling it how it is. So sure enough. Tierra gets picked up by Paul's driver. They go up to Paul's place and Paul is dressed very casually. And so Brienne, I mean, sorry, Tierra feels like she's overdressed because she has on a cute little, you know, summer dress. And so he's very casual though. And he's like, you look beautiful. And that's when he leans in and he kisses her on the cheek. So he grabs her hand and she's like, oh, his hand feels so strong and manly. <laughs> he grabs her hand. And that's when he grabs her by the waist and without even blinking, he falls on, kisses her in the mouth and Tierra can't hold it back then. She kisses him back and she's like, Paul, look, I really like you. 
but I just want to explain something to you. I, you know, I'm a virgin. And he's like, yes. And she's like, well, about myself. And so she's like, you know, the main reason why is that I plan on saving myself for marriage. And Paul looks at her and he says, okay, I'm willing to wait. That's when he leans in and gives her another kiss. Woo, child, that's part three, y'all.